Hi everyone, Becky here from Notes from the Sewing Room. I hope you're having a really good day wherever you are in the world and whatever you're up to. Today I am bringing you a video that's all about sewing and Easter craft ideas. I've hopefully got ideas here that are suitable for everyone, for grown-ups and for kids. So hopefully you enjoy what I've got to share with you today. I don't know about you, but I love Easter and I love springtime in general. For me, it's kind of like a time of year where there's like hope in the air and I love seeing all the spring flowers popping up and I love making different kinds of crafts for Easter as well. So hopefully I've got a few ideas here that you will enjoy seeing. All of the ideas that I'm sharing with you today are things that I've found online. There's a variety of different ideas. So I'm gonna be including all of the details to everything that I mention in the description box below. So you'll find all of the links there to all of the free tutorials and free ideas as well, as well as a few extra links to hopefully give you a little bit of extra inspiration of things that you could potentially make. I'm gonna be sharing 10 different ideas across this video. And if you do enjoy um, sewing and craft and you enjoy what I've got to share with you today, I would love it if you could hit that like button and perhaps leave me a comment down below and let me know what you're planning to make for Easter and if you are planning to make any of the ideas that I'm going to share with you today. That just means that it encourages YouTube to share this video with other people that are you know, into sewing and they're into craft. So hopefully those people can enjoy what I've got to share with you today as well. So let's get to it and I'm going to be sharing, like I said, 10 different ideas for you to hopefully have a go at and enjoy. Hopefully each of the ideas are really quick too. It's only about two weeks till Easter when I'm filming this video. So if you are like me and you've not got loads of time and you just want to kind of do a few quick makes here and there, hopefully I've got some things that will be right up your street. Idea number one is actually a quilted fabric basket and that is from the Stitch Sisters. The Stitch Sisters have got some fantastic videos um, that you can both pay for and some of them at the moment are free as well, as well as of course doing fantastic vlogs and um, everything as well. So if you are new to their ideas, I would definitely recommend that you check them out. I'm going to be putting some footage on the screen of this particular idea and all of the other ideas that I'm mentioning in this video as well so you can get a bit of a flavour and an idea of the things that I'm actually talking to you about because I, I like to see things when they're visual, should I say, I like to visually see things as well as you know someone telling me about them so hopefully you do find that useful as well. So this quilted fabric basket is a great idea really because it encourages you to use up scraps that you've got lying about at home, perhaps if you've got some pastel scraps uh, from leftover projects that you've got, perhaps you're into quilting, perhaps you're not, perhaps you just want to try something new, then I think this is a fairly quick quilting project that you hopefully you could do in little bits of time here and there and it's a, a lovely project that the Stitch Sisters really hold your hand through each of the different steps and you can basically sign up on their website and you can see this tutorial for free at the moment and it's got a little segments of different videos so that you can talk you through each of the different steps including what you'll need, how to quilt the main panels, adding the band, trimming the corners and turning everything through and assembling the basket as well as um, how to do boxed corners as well. All really good skills that I know that I'm interested in learning. I'm definitely going to be doing um, this fabric basket myself. On the actual video, it's not themed as being East for Easter. However, I think if you were to make this in some Easter themed fabrics or um, perhaps just some pastel scraps or anything that basically says kind of springtime and Easter that you might have lying about at home, I think this would be a perfect little project to fill with some yummy kind of chocolate treats or maybe some baking that you can do and you can share it as a family. Of course, you could eat it yourself. That might be what I might do. Uh, or perhaps you could gift it to a friend or a family member. So I think this is a lovely project. And of course, the basket can be used afterwards as well for perhaps um, sewing scraps or um, to store anything else in around the house. 
Idea number two I'm sharing with you today is from countryliving.com and they've got some fantastic ideas for making Easter wreaths. Now, I think these different wreath ideas are things that you can either have a go at on your own if you want to do something perhaps a little bit more sophisticated, something that's you know quite lovely that you can have on your front door or somewhere around the house. Some of them are so pretty I don't think you probably want to take them down to be honest but um, some of them are also really suitable to do with kids as well. Now I'm gonna be sharing below in the description box some of my favorite ideas, but one of them that really jumped out for me was making a pom-pom wreath which has got some really pretty little rabbit ears. There was also a really easy looking wreath that you can make out of egg cartons. So I'm sure a lot of us have got some cardboard egg cartons lying about at home. And this tutorial looks like you just have to paint them up and put them onto a basic kind of ring to make a wreath at home. And of course you could add any other bits of decorations that you've got lying about at home to, to jazz it up a little bit and make it Easter themed. There was also a really pretty idea that I liked where it was kind of carrot themed and it was kind of, it's got some lovely decorations on there. I'm going to show some pictures rather than me actually describing it all, but I think th those three different wreath ideas are just really different, quite unusual to be honest, and things that I'm sure that you could bring out year after year and, you know, they're never going to date and you always have those memories also of making them if you did sit down, um, you know, with someone in your house and make it together. I always love the idea of having a bit of a craftenoon, but uh, my husband never really wants to sit down with me and do a craftenoon. I think he'd rather be doing something else, to be honest. But I do hope when my little boy's a little bit older that we can sit down and do some crafting together. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. The next idea I wanted to share with you today is to make a really pretty bunny headband. And I think this would be a lovely little gift to give to any child that you know, whether that's your own child, a friend's child, a, you know, your grandchildren, anything like that. It's just a lovely little project that I think would be really quick to make and really fun to wear. All you have to do is take a headband that you've already got perhaps lying about the house and cover it in ribbon. Then you can use a hot glue gun to attach some really pretty artificial flowers. Um, or any other decorations that you've got that you might, might like to use instead. Perhaps you could make some paper flowers or something like that to um, add on to the headband. And then of course you can glue on some bunny ears as well. I'm sure there's lots of different ways that you could have a go at making bunny ears, whether they're from pipe cleaners perhaps, um, or perhaps you could have a go at doing them in paper or cardboard or any supplies that you've got lying about at home that you think could make some nice little ears to stick onto the headband. But I think this would be a really fun little project that's really not going to take very much time at all. So if you are short on time, this could be an ideal project for you. Idea number four that I'm sharing with you today is to make some pretty Easter cards. Now, if you are into paper crafts, then of course you may have your own ideas as well. But there are loads of ideas when I was researching this video that I found online in terms of Easter themed cards that you can make. And there's some really fun ideas for kids and there's some really lovely ideas as well for grown-ups out there as well. I'm not that great at paper crafts myself, but I do really like to have a go. And there are some really simple ideas that would be definitely really fun to have a go at. You really don't need to have a lot of different equipment and you know fancy bits and pieces to have a go at these. One of the ideas that I really liked was a kids themed idea really, uh, although you could have a go yourself if, if you wanted to, of course. And that is using some paints to make some fingerprint cards. Now this is a really fun project that I think, you know, you really don't have to have a lot of time to do. You perhaps, perhaps just need some a range of different paints that you've got at home and poster paint or something like that, I'm guessing would work perfectly. As long as you've got some paints that you can put your fingers in and you can put down on card, then that's about it. Apart from perhaps having some felt tips to do the writing. And of course you can write your own little lovely message on there, whether that's happy Easter or happy springtime, or I don't know, anything you want to put on there. In the example that I'm putting on the screen now, hopefully you can see there's some really cute little chicks that have been done in a yellow paint, and then um, someone has used a, a black marker to do the details on there. And there's a really cute bunny as well, which I think could be done in a brown, or it could be done in you know any color that you want your bunny to be, pink, purple, I don't know, you could be as creative as you want to be. Of course, it doesn't have to be like a real life bunny, it can be, like any kind of Easter bunny that you can think of. Another card making idea that I came across that I really liked was using a potato to 
you know, most of us have got potatoes in the house and you can basically carve into a potato your own little design, whether that's an Easter egg or, or something else. And then you can put some paint on that and then you can print it onto your cards. I think that would just be a really good little craft that, you know, again, you don't need lots of different fancy bits and pieces for and you could create your own unique designs. I think Easter eggs would be a great thing to do with the potato stamps, but I'm sure you could come up with your own ideas as well. When I was looking at different card ideas, there was also loads of great ideas coming up on Pinterest. So if you are interested in making your own Easter cards, then you could check out Pinterest as well. Idea number five that I wanted to share with you today is actually not really sewing or craft related as such, and it's not really baking either, but I guess it kind of falls in between somewhere. And that is to make some beautiful and tasty little Easter nest cakes. I love things like cornflake cakes and Rice Krispie cakes, things like that. You don't have to be good at baking and you know, you really don't need too many different ingredients and you can whip up something that looks really pretty and you know, most people would enjoy them as well if you have got a bit of a sweet tooth. You can of course decorate your nest cakes with lovely little things like Cadbury's chocolate little eggs or anything that you've got that you might think is edible and would look pretty on top of um, these little nest cakes. I found a really good recipe on bbc.co.uk which I'm going to put a little footage on the screen about this what I found and I shall put the information in the description box below so that you can have a look yourself if you are unsure of how to start with this little project. Again, this is something that I'm going to be having a go at over the next week or so. And even though we're not really seeing anyone at the moment, I'm sure I'm more than happy to eat these little nest cakes for myself and I'm sure my husband will dig in as well. If you are looking to decorate your house for this Easter, why not make yourself a table runner? So idea number six today is to make yourself an Easter themed table runner. Now at Christmas time, I actually recorded a little sew along kind of sewing tutorial of how to make a table runner. Now, even though that was Christmas themed, it could definitely be turned into an Easter craft as well. Obviously you just have to change the fabric that you're using, maybe use something that's got some pretty floral design on it or maybe something in some kind of different pastel shades you could of course upcycle an old tablecloth or you know perhaps an old project that you've got lying about at home so this is a really good craft and it just makes your dining room look really super. I will put in a link in my description box below of my table runner tutorial, the one that I put together before. So hopefully you'll find that really useful. I also found lots of really fun inspiration over on Pinterest for this craft as well. That gives you lots of different ideas of the different fabrics that you can use and the different designs that you could potentially go for. This is a project that you could make as complicated or as simple as you'd like. And depending on the fabrics you go for and the design you go for as well, then this can be a really quick project. The table runner that I put together can be made in under an hour. To be honest, a lot less than that if you are an experienced sewist and you are someone that's perhaps had a go at doing this project before. Idea number seven today is to make some rice filled little Easter bunnies, which could look fun displayed in any place around your house. And I think they could also be used as things like pattern weights if you are sewing, or they could just be displayed on a lovely shelf somewhere in your house. They could also be used, I guess, as, as bookends or something like that. This is a really simple project that you really don't need to have a lot of time to do. And you could definitely use scrap bits of fabric for this or perhaps some vintage tablecloth pieces or anything that you've got lying about the house to do this project. The tutorial that I found is from flamingotoes.com and I will of course put footage on the screen like I have been the whole way along and the description below as well but they look really cute little bunnies and perfect for Easter and to be honest if I made some of these I think I'd just keep them out and keep using them as pattern weights or something like that because they're, they're filled with rice they're going to hold everything in place if you are cutting out a sewing pattern or a craft project and they're going to look really fun as well. I think these would be really sweet little gifts for someone, whether that's, um, you know, a friend or a family member, and they can kind of have their own little personality as well, if that makes any sense at all, because you can draw a little face on there, or you can stitch a little face on there, and you can put a little bow on the top as well to make them all look really individual. I love the designs in the, the blog that I'm showing on the screen because they've used some lovely vintage floral fabrics there, and the bows that they've put on are really lovely, and the little faces are really cute. So yeah, I, I'm definitely tempted to have a go at doing this project myself. 
Idea number eight today is to have a go at doing some bunny hot pads, which could be used around the house and they'll look really stylish as well. Now, these could be made in all kinds of different color combinations and different fabrics, depending on what scraps you've got lying around the house. The tutorial design that I found has got a lovely little bunny silhouette on there and it's got some lovely kind of grass design and they've used a lovely spotty fabric in the background. I think this is something that could be used all year round, apart from just for easy if you wanted to. I like this tutorial because it includes lots of different pictures and it breaks down exactly what you both need for the project and what you need to do step by step as you go along. I think you could use these little pads in your kitchen or um, any, anywhere that you think they may be useful and you can be as creative as you want to with the designs as well. You don't have to put bunnies on there, you could put some pretty flowers on there or you could perhaps put some initials on there if you didn't want to make them for Easter and you wanted to have a go at making them for someone's birthday perhaps. I think you could definitely be as creative as you want to as this. Materials like cotton poplin or perhaps a quilting cotton or maybe a heavyweight linen or something like that would all be perfect for this project, I'm sure. Idea number nine that I wanted to share with you today is to make some bunny napkin rings. So if you are planning on making some kind of Easter dinner, why not do it in style and make something lovely to display on your table? This project really doesn't take a lot of time to do and you could definitely have a go at doing it one evening and or, and or perhaps at the weekend or if you just got a bit of time one afternoon. You could use fat quarters for this project or you could use some fabric scraps and you could be as creative as you wanted to, I guess, with you know the, the pattern fabric, etc., etc., that you use for this particular project. You'll also need some fabric scissors and some pins, some fusible interfacing and a bunny ear pattern that you want to follow or perhaps a bunny ear design, should I say. But this tutorial just talk you through exactly what you need to do, so no fear there. Idea number 10 and my final idea for today is to make a no sew pillow that's Easter themed. So this could have a bunny design on it. Again, it could go, for, it could have a floral design on there. It could have anything on there that basically says Easter to you. It could perhaps have an Easter egg design or perhaps a little chick design, anything that takes your fancy. All you need to do is uh, cut out your design and basically stick it on there with a hot glue gun. So you could use a pillow that you've made yourself in terms of the, the, cu the, the cushion uh, cover, or you could use a cushion cover that you've already got at home and you're looking to decorate it and upcycle it. This project was from on uncommondesigns.com, I think, if I've got that correct. And I will put the details below, but I think this is a really fun idea that you don't really have to have any sewing ability to do unless you want to stitch on some different designs yourself. But this really can be done just with, say, a hot glue gun or perhaps some fabric glue that you might already have at home. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and I've given you a little bit of inspiration of things that you can make quickly before Easter, whether that's on your own or with, um, you know, someone in your household. But um, if you have enjoyed watching today, I would love it if you could hit that like button. Perhaps leave me a comment below, tell me what you've enjoyed about this video or perhaps what you're making for Easter and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Then hopefully you won't miss any of my latest videos. A lot of my videos are relating to sewing and different craft projects as well. So I'd love it if you could check out some of my other videos if you are new to my channel. But thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed already and who does watch um, all of my videos um, and you know support me week after week I really do appreciate that but for now I'll leave it there thank you so much for joining me today um, I hope you've enjoyed what I've got to share with you and I'll see you soon bye